Hey guys, Adam Rose, Vice President and Senior Loan Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. And this is another episode of the Mortgage Guy Podcast. And this week and next week, we are going to do some market updates and what's happening. Uh, some updates on rates and loan amounts. And our favorite topic is lawsuits. So, and then we're going to take a little bit of a break uh, right around Christmas time in between uh, Christmas and the New Year. So, you'll see my face for a couple more weeks here. And then we're going to take a little bit of a break. But some market updates I want to jump into is uh, conventional financing. So conforming limits. All right. So that's your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, conventional financing. Maximum loan amounts now. They jumped. All right. So back uh, last year, or well, all of 2023, the maximum loan amount was $726,200. Um, so what that means is, is we got to stay under that, that, that loan amount range uh, in order to do conventional financing. Right. If you go over that, you're looking at jumbo uh, loans, jumbo loans have completely different terms. Rates are different. Down payment requirements are different. Mortgage insurance, all this fun stuff. A lot of people to combat that they'll do. Uh, so I don't know. Let's say you're buying a million dollar house, right? Uh, and as standard, the conforming limits, maybe they do like a three hundred thousand dollar piggyback, right? That's a second mortgage, right? So so it's over the conforming limit, right? It's not no longer a jumbo because your primary mortgage is less than the seven twenty six. But the good news is, uh, it jumped. So it's at seven sixty six five fifty. We don't run into that a ton in our market here, uh, but you know, if you're shopping in the Columbus market or some uh, higher end Troy market and Dayton markets, uh, you're going to run into it every now and again. So that's that's good news uh, for those, especially for people that might be looking into refinancing that might have been over the limits and they want to get rid of that second uh, or that piggyback that when they bought the house two or three years ago and they feel like they can get under the mark. So that's good news. Uh, it has increased. But when you think about it, it's a little scary at the same time because what they're saying with that big jump of over forty grand is, hey, home prices are up still, right? They're continuing to rise a little bit. Um, so FYI there. Same thing with FHA. So news came out, right? FHA's jumped. So we're at four ninety eight now on FHA. Now there again, there are other markets where it's actually a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, ceiling limit will be over a million dollars, depending on where you're buying your home at, specifically Hawaii. So if you're looking at that home out in Hawaii, you want to move out there, you can go up to $1.1 million on a loan amount and do it FHA. That's crazy. That's only 3.5% down, by the way. So FYI, guys, so just a couple of market updates on those. Um, and we kind of see these loan amounts going, or these loan limits going up. So that makes you think, hey, the, the market's still increasing. Uh, valuations are still going up. Why else would you constantly increase these loan limits to keep it in conforming? Well, on that topic, equity, right? Um, so everybody feels like they have a ton of equity. We're at a, a point in the market where we've never seen so much equity in homes before. And some people typically will tap into that equity, especially in this type of market where uh, inflation has been causing some problems, right? You know, people are using credit cards to pay for things and their debt loads getting a little out of control. A lot of people use the equity in their home, tap into it, whether it's a second mortgage, a HELOC, or uh, completely refinancing it and cashing out to save a ton of money and, and, and save some disposable income. Um, so on that topic, the question is, are people doing it? Well, I see people doing it still. Very minimal, right? Because a lot of those people are sitting in those twos to threes. Uh, so it's hard to come off that first. So that's why people are moving into that HELOC, the set, closed end second mortgages, you know, borrowing 25 or 30 grand, paying off the debts. And this new debt, this second mortgage might be amortized over 20 years, 25 years. So it, it saves them money monthly and it's a little bit more manageable, right? Because uh, like we've talked about before, um, inflation is causing a lot of problems with that. So people are using it. However, it says homeowners have been very, very reluctant to tap their tappable equity, right? So what's what's available out there? Only 0.41% of people in this prior quarter, all right, third quarter of the year, have tapped into their equity to help pay off debts or what have you. Um, that's crazy, really, when you think about it. You know, even with higher uh, equity levels, they're just they're just not not wanting to jump into it, which I get. You know, rates a little bit higher, um, but nonetheless, it is a great tool you guys can still use, right, to get rid of some high interest car loans, get rid of high interest credit card debts, uh, whatever uh, works for you, uh, or whatever you have outstanding. So uh, something to still consider. Um, and the good news, though, if 
with these high equity levels that we are currently encountering, that's a big reason to my understanding why we're not seeing a ton of foreclosures. Um, because if you watched my video a couple weeks ago, we talked about how the delinquency rates are extremely high at the moment. Not extremely. They're higher than usual. Okay. But the amount of foreclosures out there aren't keeping pace with that delinquency rate, which is odd, right? That was a, it was a weird number. I think uh, Kevin, Kevin Risk and I were talking about that, and we wanted to kind of get some more information on it. Well, some of the highlights here are there have been some alternative options that loan servicers are giving to consumers that are seriously delinquent and facing foreclosure by tapping in their equity and doing some different options there. So that kind of answers our question on why, hey, I don't understand why the, the rate of delinquencies versus the rate of foreclosure rates are so off. It didn't make any sense. So it sounds like there's a lot of servicers out there just changing up some uh, loan programs or uh, servicing options or reconfiguring using equity and tapping it in and, and, and basically catching up the payments but increasing the loan balance, right? Um, as you know, so if something were to happen, they, the loan servicer had increased that loan amount to cover their $5,000 behind in payments, whatever the case is, sounds like that's what's happening. So that's what's slowing down that foreclosure, uh, rate, uh, which is a good thing. We want to keep people in their homes. It's, it's very, something no one wants to do. Um, but with this, right? So the question is, since, since we're still at these peak market rates, uh, and equity positions and no one's wanting to tap it. The question is, when are people going to come off of it, right? Uh, we've talked about this before, about people wanting to jump into the market and sell their home, but they're they're still stuck in that 2 to 3% range. Um, if, well, some of my older people that are watching this, they may remember uh, something called golden handcuffs. And we're talking about in the corporate world. So if you recall what golden handcuffs were, golden handcuffs were really uh, for individuals that were working for very, very large corporations, Right. They didn't want you to leave, so they paid you high salaries, they had amazing benefits, and they expected loyalty. That was a golden handcuff. That's why people didn't go out and start their own business or take those chances and move to another employer because the grass isn't always greener, right? They have these amazing benefits. And we're talking about companies like, like GE and, and Procter and & Gamble, places like that. Well, that same, that same concept, the golden handcuffs, can be used now in the real estate industry, right? So we have uh, a chart that we're going to pull up for you, and it's going to show you uh, what this looks like. And let's go ahead and pop it up right now. So what this chart is saying is, if you look at the bottom left and the right, so basically people that have rates from 2 to 4%, 2 to 4% control 70% of home ownership right now. That's why we have so much inventory issues. We've talked about it before, right? People are stuck on these low rates. They don't want to unload it yet. Rates aren't quite where they need to be. And then as you can see, uh, people that have a rate from 4 to 5% only control 20% of the market. And 5 to 6%, 5.3. And then greater than 6, 3.7. 3.7. So my question to you, and I want to get the audience involved in this, if you are watching this video, where do you think the rates need to be to change this chart? to get the people from the 2 to 4% range off the bench and into the market, listing their homes and moving up or switching you know, where they're going or their environment and uh, location. I personally believe that in 2025, we do expect the rates to hit back into those fives, at least that's the expectation, right? And if it happens, we feel that a lot of those people sitting on the sidelines right now are going to list, and so we may see that pie chart start to move a little bit, right? And I hope we do. We need to get some inventory out there for some of these new home buyers uh, and get some of these basement dwellers out of mom and dad's house. So um, I want to see your, hear your thoughts. So comment in the video. Uh, let us know where you think the rates need to be for some of these people to start unloading these properties and moving on to the next. Uh, and that's all I have for you guys this week. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is free, as well as Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And we'll see you guys next week.